This is a very common question that gets brought up in Sync Academy, and it's so common and recurring that I wanted to make a YouTube video so that you guys all know uh, how to deal with this kind of stuff. Uh, probably once every week, maybe once every two weeks, we get a post in Sync Academy from a member who's asking for clarification on what a library means when they told them they needed some kind of asset, right? So some of these examples would be, hey, we need a narrative version of this track. Well, what does narrative mean? Well, a lot of times that could mean you take out all the lead instruments. Other times it could mean you just have your drums and bass. It could mean many different things. Or it could be in terms of um, a library accepted my album. They said they want alt mixes uh, and cut downs, but I don't know exactly what they want. Do you guys think I should give them 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds? What should I give them? What kind of alt mixes? Um, and the list goes on and on and on of different types of sort of points of um, confusion or just not, not being clear on exactly what a library is asking from you. So I put a poll out just the other day just to kind of be a little you know, funny about this, which is to say, if you're working with a library and they ask you for something, but you're not clear exactly on what they want, who should you ask for clarification? You know, Jesse, because he obviously knows everything the Sync Academy community because we all know everything, or the library themselves because they're the ones asking you for these assets. The answer, of course, is the library, right? And I think too often, a lot of you guys are afraid or timid or worried or scared to go ask a library for clarification because you don't wanna look like maybe a newbie, you don't wanna look like you don't know what you're doing, um, you wanna look like a professional, and so there's, there might be this fear that you don't wanna ask for clarification because a quote unquote professional would just know what narrative means, right? Or a professional would know what alt mixes means. Um, I wanna just dispel all of that and you don't need to feel stupid. You don't need to feel like you're incompetent, you don't need to feel like a newbie because it doesn't matter that I've been in this business for 13 years now, if I go work with a new library tomorrow and they say, go ahead and give us those alt downs and cut, or those alt mixes and cut downs, I would be very foolish to just assume, okay, well, the last library wanted these types, so I'll just go ahead and make those for you. I would be very wise to say, let me know exactly what you mean by alt mixes. Which specific ones do you want? When you refer to cut downs, are there specific times that you need those to be cut down to? That is actually the professional approach. It's actually to ask them for clarification on those things. The amateur move is to assume you know what they're talking about or to go ask somebody else to interpret what they wanted because I say this all day, all day long in Sync Academy. I always say, you guys can ask me these questions all you want and I could give you some guess, but do you really wanna take my word for, you know, just assume that whatever my interpretation of their language is, is something that you should just run with. I think that'd be very foolish. That's why I usually do not give any sort of interpretation for those kind of questions. And I don't try to answer it because it's like, I don't want to send you guys down a path saying, oh yeah, do the 15, 30, and 60 seconds. You send those to the library and they say, no, we actually needed a sting, a 10 second, and a 45 second, right? Which can happen. So I try to stay away from answering those kind of questions because I'm not the library. I don't know what they want. I don't, I don't know what their needs are. I don't know what they need to push out to their clients. So I want to make sure that you guys hopefully can build a little bit more confidence in yourselves. So start directly asking the people that you're working with for clarification on these issues, including contracts. This happens all the time with contracts too. They said that it's not exclusive. However, there's this other clause in the contract. I don't know what this means. What do you guys think? Well, we're not your lawyers, right? So you're not paying us to give you legal advice and I'm definitely not giving legal advice. So please don't send me your contracts because I always say, sorry guys, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not your manager. I'm not here to interpret legal language for you. Not the business that I'm in. You need to either go talk to a lawyer or I think the first thing you can do, which will save you a lot of money uh, and time is just directly ask your library, hey, the contract says this. I'm a little confused about the language. Can you help me understand exactly what it is that I'm signing here? Nine times out of 10, they're going to be happy to hold your hand through that. They're going to explain it to you because they want to make sure that you are very clear on what you're signing over, how you're going to be working with them, how your working relationship is going to look moving forward. So I don't think there's any shame and any harm in asking for clarification. And in fact, not only is there no shame or harm, I think it is the antidote. It is the way to deal with these points of confusion um, and working with a new company. And again, it does not matter if you're brand new to this business or you've been working with this in this industry for over for a decade, these are the questions that all professionals ask. So when you come back to them and say, can you guys please clarify this? 
just keep in mind that that's not an amateur doing that. That's a professional. Okay, so maybe you just need to, in your mind, rebrand it, right? So you're not looking like you don't know what you're talking about. You're actually saying, I care enough about serving your needs. I care enough about you guys. I care enough about our working relationship and my own career that I'm willing to just send an email to ask for clarification on these things to make sure that I'm delivering exactly what it is you want so that when you open emails up from me, you guys get this feeling, the library gets this feeling of just, wow, this producer is always delivering for us. They always send us exactly what we need in the format that we need it. We don't have to fix things. We don't have to email them back to, you know, uh, uh, whatever, fix whatever they didn't do right. So, they just your your brand and your reputation in their eyes just bumps up more and more and more the more that you work with them so if you're a professional professionals ask for clarification professionals will email back and say please let me know exactly what you need so i want to keep just hounding on this because every time we get these posts in sync academy it's just always like ugh, i feel like i'm hitting my head against the wall to say how could any one of us or myself know what somebody else means and and try to interpret their thoughts and mind read and try to guess it's very foolish to do that kind of stuff. You guys know what happens when you assume, right? It's just not a really profitable and um, and uh, smart way, I should say, to go about uh, any side of business, not just sync licensing. So hopefully that's a nice little reminder for you guys. Thanks so much for watching.